of a lie and to be in favor of people using these contraceptive things when you're in public life. Of course, I guess you didn't know then that your husband would be running for president one day, and when you do that, you just can't afford to offend a lot of nice people who vote. She's a Broadway star with a laundry list of well-loved musical theater credits. Hairspray, Little Shop of Horrors, Xanadu, last season's Catch Me If You Can. Now she's making her Broadway debut as a dramatic actress as part of the starry ensemble of The Best Man. Please welcome Carrie Butler. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? First of all, thank you for randomly wearing a matching outfit. I know. A total accident. We did not plan <laughs> this. It looks like a Valentine's Day episode, but it's not. So, welcome. How are you? I'm great. You are in a play. I am. How exciting. I know. And how, like, you know, it's, it's so funny because people get pigeonholed in this yes. industry, and here you are. So, how do you feel about to open in a dramatic play? Well, it's funny. You know, when I was growing up, I always wanted to do musical theater, and I never even dreamed big enough to be in a straight play on Broadway. <laughs> so, I mean, in a way, I feel like it's the biggest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and I'm, I'm nervous about it just because I can't rely on my singing. You know, like normally when I open a show, I'm like, well, at least I know I'll sound good. <laughs> like, if nothing else happens, I'll, I've got that in my pocket. <laughs> but, but now I can't fall back on that. So, so in that way, uh, that's the only thing I'm a little bit nervous about. But I'm super excited and I just, I can't even, I've been walking around for months with this huge smile on my face because I just, I still can't even believe that I'm doing this show with these people. Yeah, so let's talk about the, the list of co-stars. So let's see, we got James Earl Jones, mm -hmm. we got Angela Lansbury, yeah. and go on. I mean, this Candace is crazy. Bergen, Eric McCormick, Michael McKeon, Now you're bragging, Nate. now you're bragging, <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, and you were, you were actually one of the last people cast. So I you was. kind of knew that you were entering this amazing ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. Is, were you nervous? Did, 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 do you feel like people, um, give you a shot, like casting directors and stuff? Do they just think of you as musical actors or was it easy to get an audition to be in a play like this? Well, Bernie Telsey's office okay. gives me a shot. Like they- and They've given you a lot of shots over your career. They've given me a lot career. of shots, yes. Yeah. And um, they will totally, I mean, I wouldn't even see myself for this part. <laughs> you know, they'll totally think of me for anything and everything. They've been really, really, really great to me. So, you know, definitely, and hopefully now that I am doing it, hopefully now more people will. But you definitely do. I mean, every time you take, you know, every time you're on your first TV show, then it's like, oh, now you can do TV. Right. You know, so everything is kind of, you're always fighting to get out of that box. Right. What about walking into rehearsals with okay, this yes. group of people? Okay, so I was so nervous before we started. And um, I'm like emailing the director all the time. So how do you see the part? Because I didn't want to go in and just be like the new kid, you know, who doesn't know what they're doing yeah. with all these great people. And so I was, can I have, can I have a dialogue coach before we start rehearsals? <laughs> what are you thinking? And so Michael gave me a bunch of stuff. He told me to watch like Cat and Hatcham Roof, a bunch of things, and and they said I could see the dialect coach. So I went with her. And because I've never even done a southern accent before. Right. And he said he wanted Mississippi, and there's so many different variations that I was kind of listening to on my own. You're a Brooklyn girl. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so she helped me a lot. She really helped when I met with her, she really helped me find the character, just how sing songy the accent is and um, how it goes so high and so low. Right, right. So uh, so once I kind of clicked into that, then I felt a little bit better. But definitely sitting around that table was very nerve wracking. And I kind of have one of the really big characters in the show where everybody else, you know, is da 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 And I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, so then I was extra nervous because I'm like way out there. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone is unbelievably nice. And, uh, yeah, I, and, and I go around asking everybody, so how do you prepare for your role? What are you doing? I watch everybody, and I'm always like trying to ask them questions on what they do and stuff. And then like James will be like, well, what did you do? I'm like, You're asking me how I prepared <laughs> for my character? <laughs> Have any of them ever seen you in any of, of your musicals? Has anyone said like, hey, I loved you in Bat <laughs> Boy. You were awesome in ba James Earl Jones. I'm sure he's a big Bat Boy freak. <laughs> no, no, James Earl I don't think has seen me in anything. Um, I don't think Angela has seen me in anything. But <laughs> the first, the first, um, the first meeting we had, yeah. um, our producer Jeffrey, Jeffrey threw, Richards, threw yeah. a cocktail party for the leads in the show to kind of take the edge off of the first okay. rehearsal, and. <laughs> John Larroquette said to me, "Oh, um, I yes, I saw your last show. Catch me if you can." 
I was like, oh, God damn it. The reviews are in. <laughs> yeah, so John Larquette. <laughs> See, I love Catch Me If You Can. Larquette, I like Catch well, Me If You Can. Well, maybe he did, but maybe he just didn't want to. Maybe he didn't like me in it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was the only one, I think, who's... No, no, no. M Michael McKeon may have seen me in something. Probably. Oh, he yeah, did. Right. We both did Hairspray. Right, of course. Um, right. But yeah, I think nobody else. Now, what about Angela Lansbury? Now, this is like a musical theater icon. Mm -hmm. Is she someone that you sort of grew up looking at and going like, wow, look at her? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, especially even just her career. Yeah. You know, how she's done, been able Murder to do she so wrote. many things. And yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was definitely uh, exciting to work with her, and that I have that great scene with her. I know. I was gonna I, when I was watching the show, which I loved, by the way. And you're you're so great, in it, and you look amazing. <laughs> okay. Your body looks amazing. You start in like lingerie. And Lots of sit ups backstage. It's, it's, I have a lot of time for sit ups. <laughs> <laughs> crunches and are you planking? I hear planking is good. Um, yes, I do do that. That's the Laura Osnes trick, planking. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But that's, I do do that. See, um, I had fram a family friend come the other day to the show, and she's like, oh my gosh, that scene, you were rubbing Angela Lansbury's back. <laughs> I said, I know. Well, you, yeah, you guys look very intimate. It's a, it's a fun scene. <laughs> yeah. It, so what's it like to be doing a scene sitting next to Angela Lansbury? I mean, is it is it just old hat now? Um. Do you call her Angie? I, or, no, you know, I do call her Angela. Um, <laughs> it's... It's not old hat. Um, I do feel like I'm friends with everyone, yeah. but it is a bit surreal still. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know, but like people who have come to see the show say when at the curtain call, I'm just like, <gasps> yeah, you, yeah. I want to dance with them. I'm part of this cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look pretty excited. Yeah, I'm very but excited. But we're excited for you. <laughs> so have you had any uh, moments with Angela Lansbury? Is it all business? Is it no, um, <laughs> we do uh, hang out. Uh, we've gone to Sardis together as a cast. Yeah. Um, you know, we always talk before the show and everything. And um, the other day, my daughter, Angela was laughing at this, my daughter was putting on a little show for me. She just surprised me. And she took, she has this plane. She took the intercom from the plane. She goes, everyone, the show will be starting in a few minutes. I'm Angela Lansbury, and I will be signing autographs. <laughs> Your daughter did that? My daughter did That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she just like picks Angela Lansbury. <laughs> the other day, Candace brought my daughter um, light up bunny ears. They're so thoughtful. Is your daughter around a lot? She, yeah, she comes by a lot. Yeah. yeah. You play Mabel Cantwell. Mm -hmm. Your your husband, you're a senator's wife, mm -hmm. and, and your husband is Eric McCormick, yes. which is pretty awesome. He's great in the show, too. Oh, good. What, yeah. what, what's it like working with him? He is a lot of fun. He's so easygoing. He's a slime and, ball in the show. Yeah, he's not like that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he's, I feel like that training, being on a sitcom, is so amazing because he, you know, he's playing the straight guy yeah. in the show, but during rehearsals, he'd be like, okay, I could do this like this, I could do this like three different ways, and I'm laughing every time, like hysterical ways to do the joke. And he's like, but I think maybe we shouldn't go for the joke because then it cuts down the reality of the scene, and da 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 wow. So he's very, very smart um, and always, just a very um, thoughtful actor, always thinking, okay, I know, I've already been reading the newspaper, we need to, sp I can't be doing, you know, just hmm. almost thinks like a director in the scenes. And you do get to also share a little stage time with James Earl Jones. Yes. Which is exciting. Very exciting. Do you know what? This is really exciting. The director had to tell James Earl Jones to stop looking at me during that scene. <laughs> <laughs> because, because the scene is, um, Eric and um, James Earl Jones' character are in a big fight, and I come in to try and break up the fight, and I can't succeed in breaking up the fight. But James Earl Jones will be like, Mabel, you know, you know like really relate to me. And I would always love it. We would have a few moments, but then the director, Ixnade my big scene with James Earl Jones. <laughs> now, I, I don't like to think about people by their ages, but, but Angela Lansbury is 86. Uh -huh. He's 81. Yeah. I mean, do you think you'll be on stage, on a Broadway stage? Do you want to be on a Broadway stage at that age? Is that something you can imagine? Do you feel like... I can't imagine it now. Yeah. Now that I'm working with them, you know, I'm always thinking like, oh, is this my last show? <laughs> you know, like that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. Like, I don't know, maybe my time's up. Maybe I'm going to be a teacher now. But now doing this show, it's really been inspirational. Right. You grew up in Bensonhurst, I did. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. What was Bensonhurst like? I've heard you say different things. I read somewhere you compared your childhood to Welcome to the Dollhouse, which is oh, yeah. which is funny because that's that movie Don Wiener. Were you like a Don Wiener? 
I was, yes. They had a name for me, which I will not tell you. You'll probably get people writing it on the internet about it. Um, but yes, I <laughs> um, so I had people, they would chant my, that name, and it was it was awful. So you, were, you, so you were bullied? You were teased? Totally, You were part of this yeah. whole bullying thing? Oh yeah, I thing. would come home like crying every day. Why? What, 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 why would they just... They were just horrible. It was horrible. Those, like tough Italian chicks? Yeah, and actually, there, no, there's one... I can't believe we're talking about this. I love it. <laughs> there was one boy who was like really mean. And I mean, Brooklyn's not... Brooklyn's tough. And he would say, you know, I'm going to cut you. Like, he would have a knife. It's Catholic I'm gonna school. I'm going to cut you? Yeah, yeah, it was Catholic school. He would say, you know, after school today, you know. I'm just nice with my little braids. Not doing anything. But, you know, I was just the girl to pick on. <laughs> and, they, and, like, you would go home crying to your mom, basically. No, I didn't even tell my mom. I cried to my dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the dog got all the, all the stories. <laughs> Yeah, and then my dog was hit by a car, and that mean boy made fun of it, and he was like, oh, yeah, I saw your dog's blood on the street. Are you serious? He was horrible, yes. What was this dog's name? What? My what? dog's? Needles. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> what, a, what an awful, awful story. Yeah, way to bring us down. Yeah, Thanks. But, <laughs> but it's good, because look at you now, so do any of these... Um... Yeah, that's right. I always think, like, in your face, yeah. people I went to school with. Yeah, hello. <laughs> do you want to uh, name any names? I do, but I won't. It's not worth it. They yeah. don't deserve that. Yeah. Have you ever had, I've heard other actors tell me that, that they have these a-holes then show up at the stage door and like be like, hey, Carrie, we went to school together. You ever, um, ever had that experience? No, I don't think that they would go to the theater. They don't go to the theater. <laughs> they don't go to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> but one time, the ringleader did, when I was in high school, you know, I didn't go to high school with him, he saw me out one night and he asked me out. And I was like, He's like, wait a minute, she's getting hot. Kidding me? <laughs> like, no idea what he did to me. Like completely clueless. Like That's that, what these I bullies, they girl. forget all about it. It's awful. Mm. So so is it fair to say that you sort of escaped from all this with, with this performing world and Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That was definitely my escape. So what did you do? Did you ever do any plays like in school? I know this is your first Broadway play, but did you ever do any non musicals that we didn't know? I did, about? I did. Like what? Come on, tell me some of your great roles. <laughs> um, I did a play called The Workroom. Okay. Um if you say so. <laughs> How was Actually, that? I, I even think I'm not even sure that's what it's called. <laughs> I had to sew in it. <laughs> I spent a lot of time learning to sew. And you were in Greece in high school, right? Oh, in high school, yeah, I did a lot of musicals. You started doing a lot. I did Greece. I did, and um, I did um, Bye Bye Birdie. We're opposite and your now husband. Yes. Joey. Yes. And like, and you didn't like each other, but you. No, pissed. I liked him. He oh. didn't like me. Well, because was he, he wasn't wasn't bullying you, I assume. No. <laughs> no. You've known him now since, like, how old were you when you met him? I mean, um, you've known him forever. Forever, yeah. We grew up down the street from each other, so even in grammar school, we knew each other. You started going to Broadway shows, I'm assuming. At some, what was your first Broadway show? Annie. Okay. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. And you were pretty young? Yeah, I think I was probably nine. So who do you think, t who took you to Annie? Your I think my parents took me, but... I know my aunt and uncle, Aunt Kathy and Uncle Leo, every Christmas would give us Broadway show tickets, and so it would be a huge deal. One year, we had we opened up our present. It was Peter Pan peanut butter, and we're like, what? And then we opened up the jar, and it was tickets to Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, you must be a big Annie fan. Huge Annie as fan. As am I. Are you excited that Annie's coming back? Yes, although it's... A little bittersweet because I think my time has passed to play Annie or Molly <laughs> yes. or any of them. Yes. Um, maybe Grace. Yeah. No, I you're not know. into that. You're not into Grace. I think it might be hard to play Grace. You know, to be the sidekick to Annie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd it's be, really all about Annie. I'd be like watching Annie in the wings, like, oh, I should be singing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you never got a chance to play Annie. I never. Only in Brooklyn Community Theater. Okay, well that's yes. something. Yeah. There's no video of that. I bet there is. Uh, I had do. I used to have a tape, an audio tape of me uh, doing um, Annie, and it was like, "Come here, Sandy. Come here." Thick Brooklyn accent. That's good though. That works. Yeah. Yeah, it works for Annie. But could you back then sing the crap out of it like you could now? Like, did you have a big voice? Yeah, early? yeah I had a big voice. Yeah. I Where'd was that come from? It's just. I was just born with it, yeah. Lucky. Wow. Do you uh, sing for your daughter a lot? I know you made yes. a whole Disney album. Was yeah, that so I used of... a lot of songs that I sing to her yeah. on it. Um, 
But yeah, I sing. I sing her all the time. She loves musicals. She loved Catch Me If You Can. Does she like Fly Fly Away? He, no, actually, that's not her favorite. She likes the up tempos. Like like uh, what's that dirty song? Doctor's she, Orders. Is she like that? Loves Doctor's <laughs> Orders. I know Norbert's <laughs> kid. Norbert Lee Bunch said his kids love Doctor's Orders. Yeah. And she'll be doing the choreography. It's all the, the time. little dirty horn number. A little inappropriate I mean, for six-year-olds. This year is not old. good. <laughs> so she's into the Broadway thing a little bit. Oh yeah, totally. Do you think maybe she might come to you and be like, Mom, maybe I want to... I don't think so, because she actually likes to be on the sidelines. She likes to see it, and she doesn't like the spotlight. Okay. So maybe, I'm hoping maybe she'll be a writer. She likes to write a lot. Maybe she should get internship at Broadway.com at some point. <laughs> maybe. Let me know. <laughs> maybe she could have a talk show on Broadway.com. <laughs> and how do you say her name? Seggy? Uh-huh. How old is she now? She's six. Wow. Yeah, it's great. And are you, are you just, like, if you look back on yourself, like, pre-Seggy, mm -hmm. P.S., are you just like a totally different person? Like if you were going to sort of in, like summarize how she changed you in one thought, what would you say? Hmm. Um, I, I, I'm a very different person. I think before I was much more um, work obsessed. Yeah. And now I, I mean, I always like to do other things. and I, So I wasn't work obsessed in, in that way, but I definitely, my career was huge to me and now yeah. I can take it or leave it a little bit more, and like she is the most important thing to me, you know? Yeah. And so I think that that's good in a way, too, because, um, you know, you don't want to be desperate as an actor. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and and definitely she gives me more of an emotional life, even though I always, I always had that. I don't know. <laughs> I've loved you in so many so many different shows, and I know that you've you've loved a lot of these shows you've done, and you've gotten sort of attached to a lot of these roles. If if I could give you like a dream time capsule, and you can go back tonight and go do one role, what show would you want to be dropped in on? Mm, Penny Pinkleton, Hairspray. Yeah, it's just it always comes back to that. It does. It's just that I mean because that was just an overall amazing experience because it was the first time for all of us, yeah. kind of where we were in this magical thing, and we were all so close. And it really was like a drug, you know, doing that show, and it was so exciting. And, and it would just be fun to be with all those people again. Yeah. I, we all loved each other so much. Yeah. We've been talking, we've been saying, we should have a, a reunion concert with everybody. Yeah, isn't 10 years like next year, this year? Maybe. The, two th what was it, 2002, 2003? I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> probably something around there. <laughs> Let's look it up. <laughs> no, actually, I think it started the summer of 2002. Uh-huh. So we got to get this uh, reunion concert pulled together in the next couple months. Mm -hmm. let's, let's let's get this done. I want this you to can happen. Do it. <laughs> uh, all right, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> We're running out of time, and you know you have to go to the theater and go be in a, a high highfalutin drama mm -hmm. with a highfalutin cast. But thank you so much for stopping by, and thank you for wearing a matching outfit. Sure. It's good to see you as thank always. You. Want me to tell you one more little fun secret about our cast? Of course. <laughs> um, this is the cutest thing about us. We all get together for a warm up before the show. Together, really? Together, yes. What time is it? Oh, yeah, I, I'm still have time for our warm up in 10 minutes. What is a warm up? James involved? Earl Jones is there on stage. You mean with a vocal us. warm up? Yes, and a physical warm up. What is it? What does Isn't it look that so like? so cute. All of us swinging our arms, yelling. Really? Yes. Isn't that the cutest? I've never done that with any other cast. And That's here insane. I am with these Candace Bergen on one side, James Earl Jones on the other side. <laughs> look at you, Carrie Butler. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. It's great Thanks. to see you. Congratulations. Thanks. Everyone needs to check out The Best Man at the Schoenfeld Theater, starring Carrie Butler and a lot of other people. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.